Good morning, beautiful people. Welcome to Weaves of Waves, and it's a bright, sunshiny morning. Wee! Yeah, I've got to be careful with the light because it's like if I move too much, because I still miss my selfie stick. At least I had it all secure there. Anyway, I would like to talk to your deck today about Jordan Peterson. I've just started his book, um, Beyond Order. I think it's like 12 rules. Now, he's an amazing man. He like really has made a difference in my life, if no, if lots of other people's lives. And yeah, I I've just read the the first first chapter. I suppose I'm not even really through the first chapter, but I read the introduction, which covered his uh, his breakdown, if you like. But yeah, it wasn't really a, a mental breakdown. It was like they gave him medication that really like so it was an allergic reaction, and to do that to such a guy, it's like wow. Our medical service is brilliant. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not anti uh, the NHS or anti anti Western medicine. If you have a broken arm or a leg, or if you've been hit by a car, um, yeah, you go to hospital and they're brilliant. They're amazing. You know, A and E. I think they're all saints in there. I think they're wonderful people. But with their medication, ah, uh, yeah, with their trying to deal with mental issues or even just things like sleep issues. Poor guy. The things they put him through. And yeah, he ended up sort of in an induced coma to stop the... Oh, jeepers, that would have hurt. And the reason I'm I'm empathetic with him is because he's an amazing man. He's an amazing mind. And to do that, to put that sort of pressure on such a mind is unfair. It's not fair at all. I suppose the world isn't fair. But he he also taught me about the patriarchy. Now, this is a, a, a fun subject. Um, I used to be a feminist. I used to, in my, my day, I, like uh, when I was in my early 20s, it was like feminism, like equal rights for all. We were fighting for paternity rights for men so that they could have two weeks off when they had a baby. Um, yeah, it was equal rights. Now it's gone so far over. I'm like, oh my God, it was really, really hijacked. Because equal rights is great because we were fighting for the men and women. Now, now it's so anti-men. It hates, the hatred of men goes deep. And hey, that's not fair. That's, that's really, really, really not fair. I'm very fond of men. I'm very fond of the things that they've done for me, I suppose, as, as well as my gender. Um... And Jordan Peterson put it into vocal uh, vocalization that I could understand. Now, a lot of his stuff goes way over my head. I'm totally admitting to that. I like look at his words and I'm like, okay, what am I, sh what am I, what is he meaning there? Sometimes I have to go and look them up and it's annoying and stuff. So these, his books are not an easy read for me. But he put the patriarch into system. You know, men go after war, men die. Um, Men die in war and they're defending your, their countries, they're defending their way of life, they're going down the coal mines, they're more likely to... They, they, men have sacrificed a hell of a lot for Western society and Western society was built to protect women and children and no, it wasn't perfect, it's not perfect and it got corrupted. Okay, but it was built to protect women and children. It has given me more rights and education than any time uh, any woman in history. I've had opportunities that I would have never had under any other regime. And so, yeah, I'm grateful for the patriarchy. I admit it's not perfect, but I don't actually see any other system on the planet that has ever been perfect. I think humans are doomed and they're flawed, but patriarchy and the Western world was built on a, an idea that perhaps, you know, we could be better. Perhaps humans could actually make a society that works. And I'm not sure they were right. It does corrupt. It corrupts really easily. Power corrupts and absolute power corrupts. Wow, what a truism that one is. But it's, it's, still, it's still a hope. It's like they tried, <laughs> you know? Um, we have better law and order in the Western world. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's like, it was like a, a, a reaching out for it. And Jordan Peterson used to rip apart the feminists, the, the woke leftist feminists. Um, and I used to cheer him on. He was just amazing. I, and yeah, it was sad to see him come down, come down so humble. Um, oh, cat wants in. <laughs> My pussy cat wants in. Hang on a second. Uh, oh. 
as always, he hears me talking. Come on in. in. Oh, a little bit more. Come on in. There you go. <laughs> there we go. Hello, little one. Okay, so where was I? Yes, camera wobbling all over the place. Yeah, I've got to hold it steady. I'm holding it steady now. There we go. Cat is, an, is a definitely a distraction. So where was I? Oh, yes, Jordan Peterson ripping apart the uh, feminists, um, the modern day feminists. And they sadden me because I, I hope they don't believe what they're spouting. <laughs> to me, it's like it's ridiculous. But OK, fair enough. Let's let's watch them battle because it was an interesting duel. And he's he's also put together sort of a whole bunch of his lectures were online and I used to watch them um, again, I didn't quite understand them. Okay, he wants attention. Here we go. Hellos. Hellos. <laughs> I didn't understand them 100%. He was, he's above my pay grade. Um, but it, it's logical. And his first book, yeah, with all the lobsters and stuff like that, he got grief for it. And I thought, well, he's just trying to help people out. Um, and he is a healer. He is a mind healer. And it's like you look at him and you think, physician, heal thyself, heal your own mind. And I think he's been doing that. And his next book, yeah, there's like, um, he's gone through a lot. He's gone through what I would call the shadow, um, gone down into the abyss. He's had suicidal thoughts. He's probably looked at taking his own life. And to me, that's a sure sign that uh, he's been there. He knows the path, he knows the terrain, and uh, I don't wish that on anyone, but they come out, they can come out different, they come out stronger, we come out stronger. Hmm. Hello. <laughs> there we go. So, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't wish it on anyone, but I hope he can come out stronger. He's got a good family by him. I'm very impressed with his daughter, and she came out in defense of him on the uh, bit about the Times piece. Um, the newspaper uh, screwed him over and she was livid. Oh, way to go, girly. What are you doing? Yeah, he's being a right pain. I'm gonna throw you out. Yeah, you can go outside. But yes, yeah, she was livid and it was wonderful to see. I so respect her and he did a great job bringing up his daughter. She's passionate, she um, goes to battle, and she's totally, you know, on his side. And it was nice to see. Um, so reading his book, right. So halfway through, and I'm like, ah, yes. Because he talks about um, social conditioning for attention. Now, as I said, he's, he's, he's way above my pay grade. I don't quite get most of what he says. All of what he says. I get a little bit. But he talks about um, attention and how we are conditioned to, um, and it's something that rang true. You see, at, when I was a little girl, it was like, um, do the song, do the dance, show us your picture, show us your... So in other words, I got attention when I was good attention. Um, and I got bad attention. I got my bottom smack to, sent to my bedroom when I did bad. So there was a difference between um, behavior. So um, I learned that good behavior gets me rewards, bad behavior gets me consequences. So that's how basically I brought my children up too. And um, how, where there was a time when I was bringing up children that I didn't speak to many other people. So it was just the children. And then when I got out to talk to people, I was like, ah, oh, it's a human being I can talk to. And I was, I had verbal diarrhea all over the place. It was like a human being that I could talk to and I could make sense to and I could discuss thoughts with. And yeah, there has been times when I've probably overshared. <laughs> Whoopsie. But I needed to get connection with um, to somebody who would listen. And it was it was a lesson because it was like, ha, 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 what am I doing? Hang on. Hang on. I'm trying to I'm trying to get approval. I'm trying to get attention. Yeah, let's pull back. Let's pull back because uh, to become aware of what you're doing was the first step. And yeah, the rule one, rule one is basically how we are social conditioned to seek attention, to seek good attention. And a lot of the verbal skills, um, yeah, the verbal skills is necessary for gaining attention, good attention. And you can see it all over the internet. People just screaming out for attention. Hey, guess what I'm doing? I'm actually formating thoughts 
and I was I was thinking about this while I was reading it. I'm formating thoughts so that I can share it, so I can just get it out of me, so I can get it out of the inside bit, and I'm free of it. Yay! I've just passed it on. So communication and how some people are starved of communication. We don't get if you don't get it at uh, childhood. If you don't know how to communicate, there's a lot of frustration and anger builds up. And how he used to just listen to people talk in his practice. He used to just listen to people talk and talk back. So it was just a, a matter of listening. Listening skills are very, very valuable. If someone's just telling you their passions and who they are and where they're coming from and what they think and feel, do you know what a therapy that is? sacred space in in another term this holding space for someone and just letting them talk and it was like wow um i'm some he, he vocalizes stuff some things that i have thought about but i've never actually managed to put it into a thought stream so i'm very very impressed with his book so far chapter one i'm already halfway through the, the chapter and he is talking about how we seek attention, how we need attention, and how society will frown at us if we say something wrong. So, yeah, let's let's cause a, a, a culture where if you talk about certain subjects, if you talk about any subject in this area, we will frown at you and we will turn you off so you can't speak it. However, if you want to talk about this, this side of things, we will allow you to and we will smile at you and we will give you lots of thumbs up. Um, if you talk about certain subjects that we approve of and it's like, mm hmm, yeah, I can see where this is going. I can see why and what it's, it's the language and changing the language in our head. We have a whole new language now. In the last year, a whole bunch of new words have come into my awareness that were never there before. Things like reset and the new normal and I could go on, but I would get frowns because you can't mention those things. And yeah, Jordan Peterson is awake and I'm sorry he's suffered. I, I hope he gets back to health because we need minds, brains and communicators like him in our lives. Even if you disagree, I don't agree with some of his stuff. I'm not an atheist. Um, I like the fact that he's willing to sort of look into it. I'm a pagan. I believe the earth is a god. I believe the sky is a god. I believe lots of gods, small g's, lots of small g's everywhere. I don't even believe in invisible friends. But I like the fact that he's able to debate it and he's able to take it in and he sits there and he goes quiet and he thinks about it. And then it's like, okay, and then you get this answer. And it's like, wow, he went inside for it. He didn't have a glib, rehearsed answer. So, yeah, I'm going to read this book and unfortunately you're going to get bits of it that I get sort of awed with. I'm going to get, oh, I want to share this. I want to share this part with you. Yeah, look where you gain attention. Look where you give attention because I'm going to. I'm starting to look now where um, it was like the power of pointing. Um, we can do a pointing with the verbal skills, pointing with a finger. Yeah, the power of pointing. Good attention, bad attention, thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah, it's it's a wonderful mindset and I love discovering new mindsets. So if you've got any comments, leave them in the comment below. BitChute, you're still my favourite. I have loads of people watching my um, videos on BitChute. Um, but if you'd like to check out my website, um, I might be doing some live streams there. I think it's probably safer. <laughs> I get to, yes, I'm good attention, bad attention. Probably safer to do live streams. I'm going to learn how to do live streams. But I've got a busy day at work now, so I will see you soon. Uh, I love you lots. Take care of yourselves and each other.